In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the topic of inventory, but this time subsequent measurement. You may remember that in the previous video, we talked about the initial measurement of inventory, that is at what amount inventory enters the uh, balance sheet. Now, we're going to tackle the question at what amount should it be presented once it has already entered the balance sheet. And that's what we mean by subsequent measurement. There are certain rules under IFRS that you should know concerning how this should be done. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. Barocco PLC prepares its financial statements under IFRS. At the 31st of December, it has two categories of inventory items with the following financial characteristics. Category 1 comprises 1,000 units held for resale with a purchase price of 20 per unit. The company estimates that these will be sold for €18.5 Euro each with delivery expenses of €2 Euro per unit to be covered by Barocco. So that's the reporting company. Category 2 includes 500 items of finished goods, uh, so something that was produced by the company itself as opposed to goods uh, held for resale uh, in the above category, with a cost to produce of €15 Euro per unit. These items are expected to be sold for €22 each, with another €3 Euro required on a per unit basis in commissions to selling agents. At the 31st of December, what is the carrying amount of Barocco's inventory? Now, when we discussed in the previous video, by the way, there's going to be a link in the description to that previous video where we discussed the initial measurement. Well, in that video, we talked about the fact that when you initially introduce an item of inventory into your balance sheet, you measure it at cost. And that sort of continues to be the default state. Uh, once that inventory item is already in your balance sheet at subsequent dates. So let me say, that cost as a basis, the cost to buy or the cost to produce, is still default in the sense that by default we still will measure those items at their cost. However, there are going to be situations in which you deviate from cost and present inventory under a different basis. We're talking about IFRS over here. The rules under US GAAP are similar with slight uh, differences. So under IFRS, the carrying amount, that is the amount at which you should be presented, presenting your inventory items in the balance sheet is going to equal the lower of, and it's lower of two things. One of them is going to be cost. So the same cost at which those items were initially introduced into the balance sheet, which is the, the sort of default state. The alternative is something called NRV, and this stands for net realizable value. In a moment, I'm going to explain what NRV actually means, but let me make you understand that if cost, so this, is lower than an RV, i.e. this, we stay under the default approach that's presenting our inventory items at their cost of purchase or cost of produ production. So we carry or present in the balance sheet those inventory, inventory items, carry our inventory at cost because it's lower than an RV. On the other hand, if the reverse situation is true, so if cost is higher than an RV, or alternatively, an RV is lower than cost, then we switch to presenting our inventory at the an RV net realizable value, and we do what's known as a write-down. So we write our inventory down, we we, sorry, we reduce the balance sheet value to NRV, net realizable value. 
Now, what is this NRV? Net realizable value is defined under IFRS as the estimated selling price of the inventory. Inventory is there to be sold. So how much will we get from an estimated sale? However, minus two things. Minus. Estimated costs of completion, maybe those inventory items are not ready yet to be sold. Maybe there's some work still that needs to be done. And if additional work needs to be done to get them ready for sale, you should, from the estimated selling price, deduct those additional costs, at least their estimated value. And one other thing that also needs to be deducted, any costs necessary to get the sale to happen. So any cost necessary to make the sale possible. Costs necessary to make the sale possible. So what is NRV ultimately? It's my estimate of how much benefit I'll get when these items are sold. So the selling price, but with an adjustment, downward adjustment for all the costs which still need to be incurred in order for that sale to take place, be it completion costs or perhaps costs paid to agents, costs paid to, I don't know, legal fees, in, which will need to be incurred in order to make the sale happen. Right, with this theory, let's move over to the question. And we've got our two inventory categories over here. Category 1 comprising 1,000 units and Category 2 comprising 500 items. And I'm going to take each one kind of one by one and we'll figure out what to do with first Category 1 items and then Category 2 items. Category 1 items have a cost. They were purchased for resale, so that's 1,000 units with a purchase price of 20 per unit. So that was 20 euros, the cost, on a per unit basis. Let's think about the net realizable value, NRV, how much net benefit the company can get from their sale. They estimate that these will be sold for 18.5 each. Well, that's not a lot, is it? compared to the costs, 18.50. But in order to make that sale possible, they'll still have to cover certain delivery expenses um, to deliver those items to clients. So minus two euros on a per unit basis. And that gives us a rather low net realizable value of 16.50. Naturally, This is lower than 20, so we will need to do a write-down to net realizable value in terms of those inventory items, which I guess by default were introduced into the balance sheet at 20, but now with this realization of how much benefit we will on a net basis achieve, they should be written down. So the value of inventory in the balance sheet should be reduced and a hit should be taken to the current income statement. So NRV here is lower. Let me write that down. On the other hand, we've got the second line. That's category two. Here, the cost or costs incurred to produce these was 15 per unit. Okay. How about net realizable value? That's going to be, well, the items are expected to be sold for 22 each. Okay. And the company will need to incur three euros on a per unit basis in fees to selling agents who, I, who will, I guess, identify buyers or connect us with buyers. What's going to be the NRV in this case? Well, 22 minus three is naturally 19. So as you can see, the net estimated benefit, the net realizable value associated with category two items is higher than cost this is lower. In which case, if cost is lower than NRV, we carry, we, we continue to carry the inventory items at their default um, approach, which is the cost basis. The overall 
carrying amount. So the amount at which the inventory will be presented in the balance sheet is going to be a sum of these two, isn't it? So we've got for the category one items, 16.5. We identified this as the NRV, the lower of the two over here. Let's multiply this by the number of units held. And that was 1000. And in terms of the category two items, well, the 15 was lower. So 15, how many items do we have? We've got 500 items of finished goods. So this is in euro, this is in euro, times 500, okay. In each case, we've got either the NRV or the cost being the lower in respect of the relevant category. And let's have a look at what this gives. Now, you can take out your calculator. I already did the relevant computation and I've got it in my notes, which I'm looking at down here. And this comes in at 24,000 euro in total. And this, as you can see on the left-hand side, corresponds very nicely with answer A.